Life happens fast. And in an instant, disaster could strike. When the choices you make mean the difference between life and death, what would you do? Put yourself to the test and see if you have what it takes to stay alive. Would you do or die? It could be any dining room in any home across America. A group of friends gathered for a carefree evening of doing nothing in particular. First person to eat three cupcakes. But as 20-year-old student Michelle Ziogas is about to find out, oh even a light-hearted dare can turn deadly. Whoa. Her friends don't realize something's wrong. I think she won, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be some kind of <laughs> Until they notice what do you have to say for yourself? Michelle's not laughing. Are you choking? She can't. They try to give her water. Give her water, dude. Yeah, I think so too. But it's no use. <laughs> She's choking. Michelle is in danger of succumbing to one of the leading causes of death in the home. Oh, oh. Her friend Jeff jumps in to help. She's Stand up. Stand up. But Stand up. is it too late? Oh, she slumps over. Oh, Her body goes limp. Oh, now, we're taking you back to the moments before Michelle passes out. She's choking and on the verge of losing consciousness. You need to act fast. What would you do? A. Force air into her lungs by using mouth to mouth. B. Begin abdominal thrusts from behind. Or C. Use the heel of your hand to hit her on the back. Here's what you should consider. Just drink more water. Your friend is just moments from passing oh, out. Oh. And it's up to you to keep her alive. <clears throat> the second she goes unresponsive, she's no longer choking. She's dying. The key to stopping that lies in a small flap of cartilage at the base of the tongue called the epiglottis. It closes over your windpipe to keep food or water from going into your lungs. Without it, you wouldn't be able to drink without drowning. Just drink more water. But when the windpipe gets blocked, nothing can get in or out. Right now, Michelle is suffocating. She's choking. With no oxygen going to Michelle's brain, you have just four to six minutes to get her breathing again before her brain cells deteriorate. Ten minutes, and she's dead. Think fast. Every second is critical. Make your choice. A. B. Or C. So, what would you do? She's choking! If you're frantic to get air into Michelle's lungs, you could lay her down and give her mouth to mouth. But the reason Michelle can't breathe in the first place is that her windpipe is completely obstructed. Oh. The cupcake is a dam, and the air you breathe, a river. Nothing gets past the dam. Are you choking? Try to breathe for Michelle now, and you're using up time that should be spent getting her to breathe for herself.
So if the blockage is the crisis point, you might think getting it out is the number one priority. And you'd be right. But how? Maybe you think you can jostle it loose by using the heel of your hand to firmly hit her between the shoulder blades. It's a technique proven to work on infants. Some experts say it might also work for adults. But others argue hitting somebody on the back while they're choking could push the food further into the throat. If that happens, you're making a bad problem much worse. As the seconds tick by, Michelle's life could be slipping away. So what should you do? She's choking! Pay attention. This is where we show you how to save a life. Stand up! Stand up! Authorities agree. The next step in this situation is to perform abdominal thrusts from behind, also known as the Heimlich maneuver. But first and foremost, have someone call 911. Then get behind her and use your fist to thrust up on her diaphragm. This should force the air still inside her lungs out as fast as 90 feet per second. That's faster than a champagne cork. Luckily for Michelle, her friend Jeff happened to be a paramedic and knew the proper steps to take. Though shaken, she survives with no lasting effects. Stand up, stand up. If you want to be ready to save a life, brush up on your skills now. Oh, no. So you can take action. She's choking. Are you choking? When disaster strikes. Oh, oh. Now that you know how easy even the simplest things can turn deadly. First person to eat three cupcakes. It's time to test your skills in a more extreme environment. The stunning fjords of Norway. A breathtaking labyrinth of steep cliffs and deep ravines. It's a mecca for a certain type of adrenaline junkie. And trust us, when we say, don't try this at home, we mean it. Base jumper Hans Langa leaps from the ominous Bjorkatind peak, nearly a mile above the lake below. He's wearing a specially designed wingsuit that allows him to steer through the air like a jet fighter, flying at speeds over a hundred miles an hour. But as you're about to experience, even for season jumpers, things can still go horribly wrong in a heartbeat. Base jumper Hans Langa leaps off a mile-high mountain wearing specially designed gear. It's called a wingsuit, and it allows him to soar through the air. 500 feet above the ground, Hans deploys his parachute. But there's a problem. The chute opens facing the wrong way and slams him into a solid rock wall. Spiraling from the hit, Hans's parachute lines twist. Then, he swings back toward the cliff. And now, he only has a few precious seconds to decide how to save himself. Jump in Hans's wingsuit. And see if your instincts would keep you alive. What would you do? A. Detach your chute and use your wingsuit to glide to the lake. B. Use your legs to kick away from the wall and aim for a soft landing. Or C. 
Scissor kick to untwist the parachute and regain control. Here's what you should consider. You're 50 stories above the ground, wearing a wingsuit, and seconds away from slamming into a massive stone wall. Keeping you aloft is a rectangular ram air parachute. Designed like a glider's wing, it carries you forward as you descend at 15 miles an hour. The chute allows you to steer if your lines aren't twisted, but yours are. Colliding with solid rock, the impact would hit you like a city bus. Right now, you're more than 400 feet from the edge of the lake. If you fall straight down from this height, you reach terminal velocity before hitting the bottom. That's over 120 miles an hour. But you won't fall that fast. The wings built into your suit increase your surface area, allowing you to glide like a flying squirrel. Your prospects are rocky. If you don't act fast, you're done for. Make your choice. A. B. Or C. So, what would you do? If your chute won't take you where you want to go, maybe you should pull the parachute release pin and aim for a safe splashdown in the lake. Gliding with a wingsuit allows you to cover large distances. For every foot you fall, you travel forward three feet. And from 500 feet up, you could easily reach the lake. But it wouldn't be a happy landing. Even if you manage to release your chute and fly clear of the wall, you're still traveling at 90 miles an hour. As impact speeds increase, a liquid like water takes on the properties of a solid, like concrete. If you chose to lose your chute and glide to the lake, you've made a deadly mistake. If losing your shoot isn't the answer, maybe you can fix it with a scissor kick. But if you think you can steer clear of the cliff, you're in for a stone cold reality check. Experienced skydivers use a scissor kick to straighten out twists in their lines and regain control. But you're 65 feet from the wall and moving at 15 miles an hour. No! That gives you just three seconds until impact. Kick all you want, but there's not enough time to regain control. Try to untwist the lines, and you chose wrong. So, what should you do? While there's no magic solution that will guarantee you'll land unscathed, the best thing to do is to kick away from the cliff wall and aim for a soft landing, like the trees below. At 15 miles an hour, you'll hit the wall with nearly 1,200 pounds of force. If you slam, flat into it. But if you're using your legs to soak up the impact, it may break bones, but your head and chest will be protected. Then, push away toward the trees below you. And that's exactly what Hans did. No! 
Incredibly, Hans pulls it off. And though he snapped a bone in his leg, he's alive. Kick away from the cliff and aim for a soft landing. That's what you do if you don't want to die. So flying like a bird nearly got your wings clipped. Maybe it's time to make like a fish and take to the high seas. 50 miles off the coast of Australia. One of nature's most efficient predators patrols the currents along the Great Barrier Reef, the marlin. Out for glory, sport fisherman Jeff Hudson and his pals brave the choppy seas in pursuit of the massive billfish. When suddenly, fish on. Their hearts race as a 600-pound beast takes the bait. But these weekend warriors are in for a big surprise. Jeff Hudson and his pals are out to land a massive marlin. When the gang hooks a fighter, they prepare for a battle. But they're not expecting to have to fight for their lives. Now grab hold of the reel and go face to face with a thrashing billfish. You only have seconds to avoid disaster. What would you do? A. Throw a towel over its eyes. B. Seize the tail and pull it over the railing. Or C. Grab the marlin by the bill and push it back into the water. Here's what you should consider. You're in rough seas, 50 miles from the shore, and inches away from being taken out by an apex ocean predator. Marlin can grow up to 14 feet long and weigh nearly 2,000 pounds. With its sleek design and body built of pure muscle, this migratory hunter may fly through the water over 60 miles per hour, as fast as a cheetah can sprint on land. Its upper jaw protrudes out like a sword, almost a quarter of the length of its entire body, and it uses it to slash and stun prey. Once hooked, Marlin can put up a ferocious fight. The muscles throughout their body are so powerful, anglers have reported seeing Marlin launch themselves up to 10 feet out of the water. In its wild attempt to break free, this Marlin has made a run at your boat and jumped right over the railing. Its powerful body thrashing with enough force to take you out. You need to act fast, and you've got three options. Make your choice. A. B. Or C. So, what would you do? With the monster marlin thrashing inside your boat, you could grab the bill and send the fish packing. When trying to land a marlin, fishermen often grab its bill to unhook the fish, but only after a long, exhaustive battle. The marlin on the other end of your line is far from fatigued, and its extended upper jaw isn't a handle. It's a weapon. When the marlin jumps aboard, one of Jeff's pals nearly gets skewered. 
he's lucky. So if you chose to put any part of your body close to this eviscerating sword, you'd make yourself a human target. Since the business end of the Marlin is hands-off, you could try to get hold of its tail and pull the fish over the railing. Marlins are swimming powerhouses, and much of that strength comes from the muscles that propel its tail. The same ones that help launch the entire mass of their bodies out of the water. Get anywhere close to its tail, and it can knock you unconscious. It's like getting hit with a sledgehammer. Choose to grab the tail, and you're cruising for a bruising. So, what should you do? If you want to survive this lethal stowaway, your best option is to keep far away and throw a towel or shirt over the marlin's eyes. The fish is thrashing because it's in a full-on panic. Covering its eyes takes away the visual stimuli that sent it into a fight-or-flight mode. Keep your distance, and with luck, the thrashing billfish will soon go where it belongs. Back in the ocean. That's just what happened with this marlin. Thankfully, no crewmen were seriously injured during the chaos. Throw in the towel. That's what you do if you don't want to die. <laughs>